Out of the wake of the Clone Wars, and as the Galactic Empire began to rise, Emperor Palpatine began to surround himself with many advisory figures in order to aid his reign over the huge imperial bureaucratic machine of government. This video explains Palpatine's political relationship with the imperial advisors and what their role was within the empire. Prior to the rise of the Galactic Empire, they were a handful of advisors that had been aides to him during the rise to power. Firstly, while he was the Senator of Naboo and secondly, after Palpatine became Supreme Chancellor. Some of those advisors included Ars Denga, Kim and Doriana, Saint Pestage, Simalu, Masamida, Janus Creatus, Sly Moore, and Sarsef Quest. Although Palpatine was extremely powerful in the dark side teachings of the Force, the Emperor could not single handedly administer the galaxy alone, and so to ensure he retained a tight oversight over administrative affairs and to safeguard their loyalty, Palpatine assigned each Imperial advisor to report on a rival advisor's domestic system which dispirited them from forming secret alliances with each other. Due to the very fact that Sheev Palpatine orchestrated his own rise to power and the Galactic Empire's formation through deceit, he knew too well the galaxy could never be run by trust alone. As he was the single reason for his advisor's political ascension to power, they deeply felt they owed their lofty position to him. The Emperor used his method of fear and greed from those who served him to forge each advisor's loyalty to him. He knew he could not afford to rely solely on their loyalty and felt his advisor's dependencies on him would be the only way to holding on to complete control. For Palpatine to implement his method in practice and although there were hundreds of advisors, the Emperor only consulted with a small group at any one occasion. Only a few advisors such as Saint Pestage and Ars Danga ever really knew Palpatine, but none of them ever gained the political upper hand over him. To preserve a culture of paranoia between his advisors, the Emperor ordered many of the others on pointless missions to gather false information which was intended to mislead each other through the appropriate political channels. While an Imperial advisor was granted oversight for the administration of systems, their day-to-day -day administrative duties involved political monitoring of their Imperial controlled planets including attention to Imperial policy on trade and commerce. Systems where the Empire's political support was not as strong, advisors were granted additional powers of control. They also would occasionally appoint planetary governors and moths and other Imperial servants of the Galactic Empire as nominated by the Emperor. For example, in 18 BBY, Ars Danga officially appointed Moff Tarkin to the rank of Grand Moff, following Palpatine's decision to officially recognise Tarkin's galactic security proposal, which became known as the Tarkin Doctrine. However, despite all the political bureaucracy and administration over Imperial controlled worlds, the galaxy still remained inefficient and no better than the days of the Old Republic. Although Palpatine's hollow promises to the Senate had been to fix the inefficiencies, in reality, those problems did not concern the Emperor. Unlike Emperor Palpatine, most advisors chose to wear baggy flamboyant lavish costumes, often wearing floppy colourful hats. Their attire was a way of providing themselves with a sense of individuality and to display their power, as well as indicating their home systems. Noticeable badges denoting their status were attached to their robes, encouraging rivalry between them, which was shrewdly condoned by Emperor Palpatine. In the next video episode in the series, I will review the Moffs and the Planetary Governors and their roles within the Empire. Please subscribe to my channel for more Imperial Explained videos. Thank you for watching, long live the Empire, and as always, may the Force be with you.